Hey everybody, it's Tom, WA2IVD. First of all, let me apologize that uh, videos have been absent for a little while. Had some family matters that had to be taken care of this summer, so that kept me a little bit busy. But uh, things are pretty well set now, and I expect to be back into making more videos, hopefully on a pretty regular basis. I know a lot of you are anxious for more D-Star videos, and today was going to be D-Star Part 3 on repeaters. But as you can see from some of this background video, I've had some VHF, UHF antenna problems, and I haven't gotten them completely sorted out yet. So my local D-Star repeater, which just recently came back on the air, is far enough away that I can't easily hit it without a pretty decent antenna. So today's video is going to be on hotspots and talking about some of the features that are similar to repeaters. So let's get to it. I was hoping to start with repeaters, but as you saw in the introduction, I'm having a little antenna trouble right now. So we're going to start this out using my hotspot. The good news there is that most of the functions for calling and commands and so forth are pretty similar whether you're going through a hotspot or a repeater. There's a few functions that are a little different or not available with a hotspot, but the rest are pretty similar. So let's start with D-Star repeater mode. You can program a D-Star repeater into memory or into a VFO. I have my hotspot, which is set up as a full duplex hotspot, so it looks very much like a repeater. And that's programmed into memory zero in bank zero. But first, we're going to take a look at what ICOM calls D-Star repeater mode. And that's accessed over here on the call button. You see the little DR above it. If you press and hold the DR button or call button, it puts you into D-Star repeater mode, and this changes the user interface of the radio. In this mode, there really is no concept of VFO mode or memory mode. You are in D-Star repeater mode, and it kind of pre-programs the radio specifically for using D-Star functions. And the primary interface is the from field here and the to field here. First we're going to take a look at the from field and this is not to be confused with my call. We talked about programming that in part one when we were doing some simplex work. My call, which you might think is from or you who's calling, uh, is your call sign for your radio. In the D-Star repeater mode, the from field is the repeater that you are using locally to call from, as opposed to a distant repeater that you might be trying to connect to. And then the two field, that's exactly the same with repeaters as it is with simplex. Uh, the default you can see here is CQ, 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 which means you're just making a local CQ call, you're not calling anybody in particular, and you're not trying to call through a distant repeater. So let's take a look at from and see how you would set up the repeater you want to call through. So your choices here are repeater list, near repeater, and transmit history. Now you may have noticed I had my hotspot frequency in there. That's because from my transmit history, and also you notice I can select FM here. So you can select FM repeaters in this if they're in your transmit history, but I'm gonna transmit digital voice, or sorry, select digital voice. And since I've been using my hotspot, that's available here in my history. And if you look down through here, this is different D-Star repeaters that I have gone through recently. So let's go back out and I'm going to skip near repeater for the moment. In repeater list, we get a list of regions first, or repeater groupings, and you'll see 
This has the entire world in it. This is a list that is loaded into the radio by default when you purchase it, but you can update this list as repeaters are added. Uh, you can download uh, the digital repeater list from ICOM and some other sources out there, and you use the SD card to update it. We'll cover that in a separate video. But as you go down, you'll see we've got U.S., and it's divided into some regions. So I'm going to pick Midwest, and you'll see my hotspot is in here because I added it to the repeater list. But let's continue on down and we'll go through and you'll you'll see the list is organized primarily by state and then cities within the state so here's Arkansas Illinois and so on and I'm gonna scroll down here and my local repeater or at least the closest one to me yep there we go so Olathe Kansas and that's WA0RCB, and the B module in the U.S., the convention is that's the UHF repeater. C would be the 2-meter repeater, and A would be a 1.2 gigahertz repeater. So if I just select Olathe, it puts that in my from. It puts the frequency, the duplex, and everything is automatically programmed for it. Now again, I'm having some antenna issues, so we're not actually going to be able to use the Olathe repeater right now. But one other thing I'll show you is near repeater, and this uses the GPS in the radio. And if I do near repeater, I can do all digital voice or FM. I'm going to do digital voice. And it says my GPS is invalid. That's because I'm in the basement, so it's going to use whatever the last position that um, it had. And I'm not sure why it thinks that's Northern California, but um, at any rate, it shows you repeaters and it shows you the distance that those repeaters are from you. So as long as your GPS is online and active, this will find the closest D-Star repeater to your location. And then just like with the list, you can pick one and it automatically puts it in. So for now, I'm going to go into transmit history and I'm going to pick my hotspot because that's what we're going to be using today. So that's how you select the repeater that you want to use. Next is the two field. And again, the default is CQ, CQ, CQ. And if I tap that a second time, it brings up my choices for that field. So local CQ which if you just tap that, it automatically puts the CQ, CQ in for you. Gateway CQ is if you want to do a, a call through another repeater. And most of the time you don't want to do a gateway CQ. And I will explain that in a little bit more detail when we start talking about how gateway CQs work versus linking, there's a lot of different ways that you can call out through other repeaters. Most of the time, most people aren't using a gateway CQ. And the reason for that is that on the repeater that you're calling through, for anybody on that repeater to answer you, they have to do a gateway call back to your repeater. And if they don't know to do that, you won't ever hear them answer you. So again, we'll get into that. Uh, your call sign. This is just like we did on Simplex where you can put in a specific call sign for a specific person. And these are call signs that I have stored in my memory. I've only got mine in here at the moment. Reflector is if you want to link to a reflector so I can link to one or unlink to one or use one and then there's also echo test and we'll talk about that and there's also repeater information these are some special commands and we'll talk about the command fields in the CQ field in a minute and then if I continue to scroll down RX history this is received calls that I've received and a lot of them are from my hotspot but these are people that I have heard on the radio or talked with on the radio and if I pick a call sign 
it will automatically enter that call sign in. So now when I call, I'd be calling this person specifically. Transmit history is again places that I've transmitted through. You can put that in. And then there's um, direct input UR or direct input repeater. This is if I want to just manually enter somebody's call sign. And, you know, so for example, if I wanted to directly put out a call to my wife, I would put her call sign in and hit enter, and then that puts that in there. Or if I wanted to directly put in a repeater call sign, you'll notice the first character is a slash. That is the, the command indicator for a gateway call. Now this has actually got a reflector that it's going through, but if I wanted to put in a repeater call sign that I wanted to go through, I would put the repeater in here. And you need to put the repeater call sign and the module, which is that A, B, or C letter to tell it if, especially if the repeater has maybe at the destination location you're trying to do a gateway call to, if it has a 440 or and a two meter repeater, you need to put that C or B to let it know which one you want it to go through. We're gonna cancel that. And those are your options. So this may seem a little confusing, but as you begin to understand it, it gets simpler. So let's put a couple of these in. We did the local CQ, and then there are some special commands, and you can enter all of these manually, but when you are in the um, DR mode, it actually puts some of these in for you. So if I do direct input repeater, oops, that is not the one I want to go to, reflector, so there were some special ones down here that said repeater information and echo test. So repeater information, and this will work with my hotspot. If I put this in, you'll notice it says repeater information and you just see an I here. So in the, the two grouping, it's an eight character field and the field is actually divided into specific segments and the the location of each character is important. The first six characters are the call sign, except if there's a slash for the first character. We'll talk about that special case in a minute, but the first six characters are normally the call sign. If you are entering the call sign of a repeater, the seventh character is that A, B, or C module character and then the eighth character is the command and that's where this i is the radio put the i in the eighth character of that so let me just key the key the mic here for my hotspot and we'll see what we get not link so you see, I got a message back that said WA2IVD slash info, and you heard the voice say not linked. So this is asking the repeater, or in my case, the hotspot, what is your status? Are you set up and linked to a, a reflector? Are you linked to another repeater somewhere? How are you set up? So that information tells you what the status is of whatever it is you're going through. So that's a very handy one. Now, let's take a look at uh, Reflector again. And if I go back up, there was this echo test. Echo test is another very useful command and that just puts an E in that eighth character position. And this is, if you wanna see if your radio is actually getting out or if you're actually making it into the repeater, Again, in my case, the hotspot. So I can key up the radio. WA2IVD testing. WA2IVD testing. So the echo command will just echo back whatever you, any D star repeater as well. So again, that's another very useful command. 
Now, let's say I want to connect to a reflector. So you say link to reflector. And I have a couple that are predefined in here. So reflector 30 Charlie is so 030 C and L is the link command. So the L is in that eighth character position. If I pick this one and 30 Charlie is a sort of a nationwide or actually I think worldwide pretty common reflector kind of like a nationwide D star repeater if you will and all you need to do is key the radio and when you key the radio by the way it's always automatically identifying because in D star your call sign is digitally sent as part of the header for the packet so you need to key it for at least a good second and a half to make sure the entire message gets transmitted Link to R E S zero three zero Charlie. So my hotspot came back to me and said it's now linked to Reflector Thirty Charlie. W A two I V D listening. Anybody around this afternoon? Well, there's a couple of us. K C zero G G A. How are you doing? Yeah, KC0GGA. Good afternoon. Uh, looks like you're in the same neighborhood as me. I'm in uh, the Kansas City area. Just uh, doing a little bit of a radio check. Actually, I'm working on a little tutorial video here for the IC705 and using it through a hotspot. So we just linked it to 30 Charlie, and I thought I'd give a quick call to make sure we were actually getting out and getting through the reflector. Strike. The same thing on this end, I changed uh, versions of the Pi Star, and there were some settings that wasn't transferred across that I had to figure out. I'm on a different radio at this time, but uh, I did get it working. Your audio sounds really good. And, uh, Brady, go ahead. Yeah, this is Mike 3, Delta Charlie in the air, listening through CL3 Charlie. Yeah, I'm 3 uh, DCI. Uh, I was going to say good afternoon, but most likely good evening where you are. And uh, thanks for jumping in there. Just doing a little bit of radio checking this afternoon. Yeah, I'm going to jump over on the other radio. I'll be uh, right back. Uh, I've got this one worked out. I need to figure out the other one. We'll see how that works out. I'll be right back. Come on. You two can carry on a conversation if you wish. KC0, GGA. Mike Free, Delta Charlie, India, returning. Yeah, the, uh, the Whiskey Alpha station. I've just got you up on APRS. Do you uh, actually. Well, He's back on his other radio. WA2IVD will be uh, clear and listening for a bit. M3D, so I said it. Yeah, I'll say sorry, three to you. And uh, I'm also on the ICOM IC705. Brilliant radio. So, be three to now, so let's. So, there was a conversation through a reflector, and as you can see, you get pretty wide coverage when you're going through the internet. So let's go back into the uh, reflector. And actually, I kind of made a mistake here because I told that to link to the reflector. So every time I keyed the mic, that was actually sending that link command, which was a little bit redundant. If I, what I really wanted to do was change back to use reflector once I did the link command. And I really should have been doing all of those calls with this set to use reflector, which basically just sets the um, the two position back to CQ, CQ, CQ. So that was my mistake, but as you can see, it actually worked fine with it set that way. Um, and with the case of a hotspot, I think the reason that was okay is because every time my hotspot saw that command, it was it saw the command to link to the reflector, 
but since it was already linked to the reflector, it didn't take any action. All right, so let's unlink from the reflector. So I'm going to touch this again. I'm going to touch reflector, and then I'm going to say unlink reflector, and you'll see a U here, and that U is in the eighth character. Oops, sorry about that. Is in the eighth character position of the toque field again. So, and I'll show you how you can enter that manually. So if I key the radio now, not linked. You'll see we got the message back, not linked. So that tells me that it unlinked from the reflector. So if we go and we take a look at the um, whoop, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong one here. I want to go down to direct input. You can actually put these in yourself. There's nothing magic about it. What the other options do for you is it basically enters those characters for you. So if I do, we're in character one here. So one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight so now i put an i in the eighth character and i just did it manually and i transmit not link i got the info message back so you can put these in manually but of course when you're in this digital repeater mode it's kind of handy to put them in um, having the radio put them in for you. And again, the special commands, link, unlink, and echo, those are all here in the reflector menu. So echo test is there, repeater information is there, link and unlink to a reflector are all in this reflector menu. And that's the ones, if you're going through a hotspot, you're probably 99% of the time going to be talking through reflectors and you're not going to be doing gateways to other repeaters. At least that's the way I've found D-Star is primarily used. And that's the two menu. That's all we're going to cover for this time. If you're interested in learning more about D-Star in general, I have included some links to helpful websites in the description. I will be doing more D-Star segments, but I'll also be mixing in other videos on the 705's many non-D-Star features as well. Hopefully, I'll be able to squeeze in some actual portable operation before this summer is over. And I will also be doing a video on that antenna fix once I get the issue sorted out with my VHF UHF antenna. If you found this video helpful, I would appreciate a click on the like button. If you're finding the channel useful, please consider subscribing. You can also click on the bell icon to be notified when new videos come out. Please check out the companion website at a to z.tech. There will be a link in the description for that as well. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Radio A to Z.